Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed today to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, let's just go on and make demands for our daily bread because I've got a lot in my heart to share with you today. The Lord helping us work this good. Say with me in faith, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me and I receive all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You know, sometimes people speak ignorantly, especially when they don't understand a thing. You know, you hear people say, must we always communicate God based on need, 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 need? Listen, you know, sometimes we are not sincere with ourselves because we carry a concept that is faulty. God is your father. And your relationship with your father, even before you knew yourself, is that you receive from him. Yes. And as long as your father is there doing well, you will always receive from him. Yes. Yeah, and, and if you have a father, for example, who who's the, the head of the family and he's doing well financially, he's up to date, he's not, you know, there are, there are times, you know, life goes this way, parents do well, and then at some point it looks like they stop, the children now come and do well, and then the children start taking care of the parents. It doesn't have to be so. God didn't say it must be so. As a parent, you can do well all your life. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? When I mean do well, you can well so much influence all your life. That's the kind of person Abraham was. You see, because your wisdom, your, the expression of your wisdom will always be valuable. Now, if you're that kind of parent, that's how God is. God has never expired. God has not gotten to the point where he said, ah, yeah, my children, I've got you all over the earth. I think it's time for you guys to start taking care of me, okay? Look, I'm, I'm retired. God is not like that. He's still relevant today, tomorrow, and forever. Now, because of that, so I was using this to analogy to, to express the thoughts of God. I need to share this with you so that when we we'll make this demand, you will know exactly what you're doing. Okay? So, you always come to that farm. You may have your own job, you may have your own business that you're running, but then as you grow, you need that father still. You come to him and say, Dad, there is this um, place we are looking at getting into, and um, the people there are giving us some trouble. We need your help. And then I say, Okay, who and who is in charge there? So, so, and so, person. Oh, so, so, and so, person. Oh, okay. I, I, I think I, I, I know them. Don't worry, I'll talk to them for you. And Father makes a call. And the next thing you're sent for, and you get what you want. You still need your Father. And it has to do with material things. See, that um, we're confused about this sort of thing. Okay, what's the matter? This is it, this is it. We need your wisdom on it. Um, uh, okay, why don't you do it this way, do it this way? Oh, wow, didn't think about it. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. What will be the end result of that thing? Material things. So don't let people cheat you to think, must everything be about material things? Yes. 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 That's all it's all about, praise God. Don't you get? Why do we walk in righteousness? Why do we walk in holiness? Yes, it's not so that we'll be floating in the air. So if you float in the air, who has that helped? Everything, you know, please. Everything we do in life is for God to help us gain influence, gain material things so that we can be of help to those around us. That's what it's all about. The thief is stealing today, which makes us have a bad society today because someone didn't take care of him when he needed someone to take care of him. 
And you were there praying and praying all night, never sleeping in night, praying all night. And yet the society is still getting worse. Why? Your prayer becomes meaningless if your neighbor cannot be helped. Can we call for that thing? Really? Just now, now you know, okay? So let's do it again. Say, Father, I receive now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. Woo, thank you for your wisdom that's been made available. Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. Listen to me. Don't let anybody cheat you. And Satan is going around cheating people. You know, people are just concerned about material things. People are just concerned about... See, the concern about material things is genuine. The challenge is the way people go about getting them. Now, that's where the challenge is. The concern for material things, the concern for material blessing, the concern for... It's not... There is nothing wrong with it. So much so that Jesus had to tell us to beware of covetousness. Now, he was talking to his disciples. Now, when he says beware of covetousness, now, take note, say beware of covetousness. Now, covetousness is not material things. Covetousness is the thinking that if I can gather this much and I look and say, oh, I have this much, then I'm made. Now, that's covetousness because the end product of that is taking your mind off God. See? But covet why did Jesus say beware of covetousness? Because it is in God's plan for you to increase with good things. But then he says, beware of that thought. He won't tell you to beware of covetousness if God has no intention of blessing you materially. So, what Jesus was literally saying is when you begin to get blessed, beware not to think that the amassing of that blessing is what have, what will make you. That's the problem. See? That's the problem. He never in any way means that we don't need material things. I'll say something earlier. You're, you know, sometimes we've had, you see, as believers, we need to be critical in our thinking. If not, we will not even be of help to the society that we dwell in. Yes. Now, listen, you, you work in a firm, for example, and everybody's corrupt, okay? And then you tell yourself that I will not be corrupt. Everybody's stealing. Everybody's doing deals. You know what I mean, deals? You know, bad, eating from the system unduly, okay? And, and everybody's doing that. And then you get in there and say, ah, me, I won't do this. Why don't you want to do that? Because I want to make heaven. I will leave this place with a good name. Okay, so you walk there for 25 years. You walk there for 30 years. And nobody ever have a testimony that you stole or that you cheated or that you did something wrong. You kept a clean slate until you retire. Question then is, how did you influence that place? Did you change? Now, you went there for this number of years. Can you say that when I was done, by the time I was retiring, nobody was stealing in that place? That you made an impact. But if at the end of your day, your journey, you said nobody can say I stole anything from them. Ah, okay, but everybody was still stealing after you left. In fact, they were even praying for you to go so that uh, nobody, no conscious eye will be on them. Uh, yeah, now that you have retired, they are rejoicing. Hey, hey, hey. See, your righteousness made no impact. And here you are boasting of your selfishness. At least I know I'm going to heaven. I know my slate is clean. You are selfish. If your righteousness did not impact your colleagues, if your righteousness, if it did not impact them in such a way that they begin to live like you, all that righteousness in terms of that organization was meaningless. Yes, it was meaningless. But now you see, because 
you are not stealing. But yet nobody wants to be like you because you're not stealing, but you're taking loan to pay your children's school fees. You are not stealing. And they say, yes, eh, I'll be paying the loan little by little. God will help me. Instead of stealing, i will rather take loan. That's even a wrong mindset. It's a wrong mindset. And it only produces self-righteousness. It doesn't prosper in any way. And it still doesn't mean that God is pleased with you. Yes, because you see, you are not stealing. You are not cheating. But then you are taking loan. You think God is pleased with that. It still means you don't understand God. I was telling you yesterday about angels. You don't understand God. You don't understand the role of angels. Look at Daniel. I always use Daniel as an example for people who, who reason this way. It's always good to be righteous. But then if your righteousness cannot translate, just like prayer, it's always good to pray. But if you're a prayer person and your prayer, there are people who pray so much, yet they are poor. There are people who pray so much. I mean, they've been praying from their youth. They pray every night, all night. You know that when you see them, you see prayer. But they still made wrong decisions in the wife they got married to. And they are, now their prayer is, Father, deliver me from this wife. And they are still praying. They still make terrible decisions when it comes to business. Why? Now you look at them and say, this guy can pray. But I don't know what is happening to him. Brothers and sisters, he's not praying. He doesn't know how to pray. He's only making noise in the night. Disturbing the whole neighborhood. When you pray, you ought to receive from the Lord. And one of the things you will always receive from the Lord freely is wisdom. Wisdom for what? In your day-to-day living. So if you're really a prayer person, you should be the smartest in terms of decision making. You should always make decisions that people may not even realize today, but then they will realize 10 years, 5 years after that, man, you were smart. Yeah. That's what prayer does. It opens your eyes to see. But if you're praying and you're not seeing, there's a problem. If you're praying and you're still begging, there's a problem. You walk around, people say, you know, God has called me to the prayer ministry. See, we spend our life praying so we don't have time. We pray for the nation. We pray so we don't have time to go and, and, and do other things. So please, uh, you, know, you are supposed to be helping us. You know, helping us. You are not praying. See, anybody that comes to meet you like that, tell him, sir, go pray some more. Because he's not praying. If he is praying and he needs food, in that place of prayer, the Lord will tell him what to do. And the Lord telling you what to do will have nothing to do with bugging other people. I'm telling you the truth. When Jesus, tax collectors came to him, did he bother anybody? No, oh, he could have gone to one of those women that, that supports his ministry and said, uh, tax collectors are trying to embarrass us. Oh, they will rush and do so. But well, he didn't do that. He told Peter exactly what to do. And what Peter did bothered nobody. It produced a miracle. Your spirituality must culminate in this material world. Your spirituality must make an impact in this material world. I, I was saying something. I said, people do wrong in the society because the light was not shining to them. Yes. It's the same thing with our country today. We keep having governance. We keep having people in government that are wrong. People in government that are, they don't know what they are doing. And now here we are in our nation, we're complaining, though the government is too bad. This is how we'll keep complaining and complaining until we get to the next election. And then we'll get to the next election. Guess what we'll start doing? Okay, among these three people, among these two people, who is the, who should we choose? Why? Because when they were doing the selection, you were not part of it. Why were you not part of it? You were busy praying. You were not acting. And I tell you, you were not even praying because God was not giving you anything to do. A prayer man will be a busy man. Because the amount of wisdom, the amount of ideas that will be pumped into his head 
from the place of prayer. Well, see, he he ali komne faratiza zari. When 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 you see a, a believer wake up and go and establish a Christian university or a Christian school, what what comes to your mind? Eh, you see these people? They are, they are setting up a school uh, that their church members cannot even pay for. Who told you they were even setting up the school for their church members? They were setting up the school for the society. Now, because you notice that in every other school, they do what they like. The curriculums are the same, but then the, the character, the attitude they teach. So people graduate from school, look at what they become in the society. And one is praying concerning it. And God says, set up a university, set up a, a school, set up a primary school, set up a secondary school. And this is how you will pattern your secondary school. All right. Thank you, Lord. He receives that wisdom from the Lord. Then he goes to work. He does the registration. Put in the, the, the effort that needs to be put in. Set up the school. And then he's focused on what God has said to him. And here you are seeing that going. Instead of you to begin to pray, Father, this looks good. How do I support? And the Lord commands you to take your tithes to that kind of person. You don't do that. Here you are criticizing. I thought when they were setting up the school, I thought they were going to make it free for church members. If they make it free, will you pay the school fees? Will, will you pay the school fees for the children that, are, that you want free? Will you pay the teachers? Or, or you will get teachers that will volunteer free too. Okay? And, and, because, and then you will volunteer um, drivers that will take those teachers to school for free. And you volunteer landlords that are going to accommodate those, those teachers for free. And you volunteer the market women that are going to give all those teachers in that school free food whenever they come to the market. Can you guarantee that before you start talking? Can you guarantee that you'll be supplying the diesel to run for the school? Can you guarantee that you'll be the one responsible? If you want everything free, you've got to pay for those things. And those things, they, you don't go to the power company and say, you know, we, we are a religious school, so, you know, if you can just supply us power for free, you know, so that we can give free education. No, nothing is free. If it's free, if they tell you it's free, it's because someone have taken up the bills. There are payments to be made. Be wise in your analysis. But beyond making it free, the purpose was, listen, God will not tell you go and set up this school and make it free. The purpose is not the free school. The purpose is the learning, the culture of learning, the transfer of knowledge. That is the purpose. So if you make it free and then there are no teachers to teach rights, what gain did you achieve? Oh, that's hard. I like that man. His school is free. Who are the teachers teaching? Are they qualified? Yes, are they qualified? So people will go through primary school, free primary school, but the teachers are just picked from anywhere, not even graduates to teach education. So you go and teach this one, you go and teach this one. And don't you know how to calculate maths? Oh yeah, you go and teach maths. What, what do you think? What kind of children? And you, and you will say, God gave you the wisdom to do that. Look at the outcome. The outcome is always the result that you see. If it is not good, if it is not impactful, then God was not in it, even if he told you to do it. God can tell you to start something, and then at the end of the day, you tell him, God, stay where you are. I'm good. I can handle this by myself, and he will leave you alone. Let's be guided in our thoughts. Let's be guided in our understanding. Don't be foolish. Don't join people to say, hey, hey, or they, they'll collect tight school bills school with tithes and, and offerings. And then at the end of it, they'll make the school so expensive. Go run a school first. Make it free. Then, and let it be quality. Then come and accuse them. Be wise. My time is up. Father, thank you. We're bringing forth a generation that is smart and wise in your truth. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.
I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.